Ah uh, yes, the age-old problem of project management. There's often an assumption that it's all about overseeing a team, assigning tasks and ensuring that everybody meets their respective deadlines. This, however, is only a facet of what project management is. I want to take project management from a different angle. Not managing other people's responsibilities, but managing your own responsibilities within whatever project structure you find yourself in. So this could be you working alone on projects in isolation, or it could be as part of a team. You still need a project management system in order to get things done. Now, that's a nice little segue because I'm using David Allen's book, Getting Things Done as a blueprint to build this out. So we go to how to project management. And we can imagine our main project as a book. And then the sub projects would be chapters within the book. But sometimes there's a sub project which needs more explanation, which needs its own index to help you navigate that chapter because it's so dense. This is the, the general idea of structuring your projects. You want to have a hierarchy of sorts. Now, in past videos, I used this visual in order to get my point across for what David Allen is trying to say. And you can see at the first level, the first level horizontal, we have all our bubbles and this should be mutually exclusive, meaning we have personal projects, we have work projects and we have creative projects. But within these three spheres or however many spheres you want, you should be able to note down everything that's on your mind relating to projects or things that you still need to do or tasks or things that keeps on popping up in your mind. In this example, we took the personal tasks or personal projects and we go to the second level horizontal where we expand all the personal projects that we have. We have creme brulee for mom's birthday. We have the Netherlands driving license admin. We have traveled to Italy for cooking. And underneath it, we have the tasks associated with those projects, which we call the vertical lineage, or which David Allen calls the vertical lineage. Now, I just think it's a very nice way to put it out on paper to understand what project management actually is. We need to be able to zoom out and zoom in to not get confused, to not get dumped with all the information between different projects. We need a map of content and this provides a nice map that you can refer back to whenever you get stuck, whenever you feel overwhelmed. Now in this session, we're going to look at the work context. And this is what I came up with. It's just an extension of the first one, but instead of the personal, we're going to look at the work bucket and we expand the work bucket. And what do we find? We find that we have a couple of main projects. We have a main project one, chef at restaurant A, and then we have a main project two, chef at restaurant B. And you can see this other bubbles, these represent other main projects, but for now, we're just going to concentrate on the two. And we're going to assume that we only have these two main projects. So you see, we moved from the first level, which is a very high bird's eye view of all our, let's say, responsibilities. And then we zoomed into the work context to see our responsibilities within the work context. But these projects won't always just be a main project and a main project and that's it. And we have immediate tasks associated with it there might be some projects that require some hierarchy, some children projects or sub projects. And that's when we move to the third level horizontal. So if you go to the main project one at Chef Restaurant A, we can see that we have a sub project one, which is kitchen management. We have sustainability initiatives for sub project two. And then for sub project three, we have a special event planning. There's a reason why I chose two projects that feels quite similar because there might be some overlap. So here you can see sub project one kitchen management, but this is going to be for the main project two. 
And then we have other sub projects for our main project too. Now we made it all the way to the third level, but there's still no actionable items that we can check off in order to complete or sustain these sub projects because kitchen management is not something that you're necessarily going to check off. It might be an ongoing process, but there would still be tasks associated with it in maintaining it. And that's when we go to the vertical lineage. And the vertical lineage is just where we take the horizontal level and we make it into actionable items. These are small bite-sized chunks that you can actually chew in order to complete or finish the sub project one or maintain it. Now, this is the general idea, and I think it gets the point across quite well. It's easy to understand, but how do we implement this system in Obsidian? Well, we start with our all projects page. Our all projects page should have this bird's eye view of the first level horizontal. And when we go there, we can see that we have all projects. We have a personal bucket. We have a creative bucket, which I should list all the associated projects underneath it. And now we get to work. And for work, we can see we have the two projects. We have project one, which is Chef Restaurant A, and we have project two, Chef Restaurant B. And then we have a quick summary as to these main projects. So these two relate to these two bubbles. So that's where we are when we go to the All Projects page. And now we can dive in. So if you go in to Project A, we can see that we should be able to see all the tasks or all the sub-projects related to Restaurant A. So if we click it and we go in, you can see all work associated with a chef or being a chef at Restaurant A. We have our child projects, we have all meetings, we have open tasks and questions, and we have sprints and efforts. Now, child projects, we don't directly assign tasks for our main projects. We can, but we obviously want to do it in the context of the sub projects if there is a sub project. And here we can see the three sub projects that we have identified. So if we go into it, we can see that we have meetings associated with the sub project. We have our open task, we have our sprints and efforts, and that is all that we need in order to finish the main project. Because this is the sub projects. If the sub projects are done, it means the main project will be done. So we just zoomed into sub project kitchen management and the vertical lineage only shows the tasks, but we want something more. We want to be able to keep track of past meetings in order to use it in the future as blueprints or templates, or we just want to refer back to information. So this is where the meetings come into play. We can see we have a meeting related to the sub project for kitchen management at restaurant A. And if we go into that meeting, we can see that the up classification shows that it goes to or it belongs to the sub project kitchen management at restaurant A. And then we also included the main project, project chef restaurant A. We have our related participants. We have tags that shows it's a type of meeting. And here we can see we made notes and we even have tasks. So let's say this task was not checked off. If we go back to our sub project, which this meeting relates to, we can see that this meeting again pops up here. We have the summary. And if we go to open tasks and questions, we can see that we have an open task associated with the sub project. Now we also want to see this task possibly, and you can decide if this works for you. You can decide if you want this task to pop up in your main project. So if we go up, we should be able to see our meetings, which we can see relates to the sub project and our open tasks and questions. So the homepage for restaurant A will have all our meetings, all our open questions. But if you want to zoom in and you don't want to get bombarded by all the other sub projects, if you really want to concentrate on kitchen management, then you go into it and then you reset your context. It's essentially going from this view 
just down to this view. You remain in a specific context that you don't feel overwhelmed and that you can make sense of all the tasks that you need to get through. We also have something called sprints and efforts. So on this day, we can say we had a sprint. And for those of you that don't know what a sprint or effort is, it's basically just a time block that you set for yourself that you want to try and get something done. So for me, it was the sprint, find out who actually works in my company, next sprint, fire them, something like that. And this is just a way to keep track of your efforts and what you're actually working on on different days. So I typically do this on my daily note. So I did this for the daily log. And if I open up the calendar, you can see it's the fifth. We have this specific task that pops up for this day as well. And then this is our type sprint, which because we highlighted the names for the project and the sub project, it will pop up in our projects and sub projects. Okay. So let's zoom out again. We go to project chef restaurant. And if we go one level up, we can see that we are all the way zoomed out, just looking at the two projects for work. You can go to chef at restaurant B and we'll see the same thing. This is essentially all this is. It's quite a simplistic structure, but this structure allows you for complex work. I work in a consulting space where I have a lot of different meetings related to a lot of different projects. And without structure like this, I would feel completely lost. I believe everybody should have a structure like this in place in order to make sense of their world, in order to not be overwhelmed with everything that's happening in your head, but to just get it out on paper. You have the sense of relief that comes over you once you've implemented a well-structured project management system.